So for my last video, I'm really curious to know if any of you were able to guess the stock that I'm going to talk about this week. If you haven't, I'll give you a few seconds to comment down below what you think I'm going to be reviewing this week, and we'll see if you guessed that correctly. Well, hopefully now you're able to guess which stock we're going to be talking about this week. And if you aren't sure still, I'm not really sure that we could be friends. So the company we're going to be talking about this week is Disney. Hey everyone, and thanks for joining me on Watch This Wednesday. My name is Matt, and as I mentioned in the intro, we are going to be talking about Disney today. Now, Disney is a company that I'm assuming everyone out there already knows about, in case you're not familiar with Disney though, a few things that we can mention here. So Disney is a large company with numerous different branches underneath them. I'll put up a graphic so you can see exactly how many companies Disney owns. Now what they're known for though is they have amusement parks, they have television broadcasting, they have their movies, they have stores that you can go into. So they're very well diversified. But a few noticeable brand or sorry, a few notable brands underneath them would be Pixar, National Geographic, ESPN, Lucas Films, Star Wars, Marvel, ABC, and so many more companies as I'm sure you could tell from that graphic. So they own a lot of different companies and they make money from numerous ways as well. Kind of as I mentioned from their amusement parks, rides and attractions. They have their direct to consumer branch, which is gonna be things like your streaming service, the Disney Plus, or they have the Disney stores where you can go in and buy gifts or clothes or dolls, whatever you get from the store. They have their media networks and then they have their studio entertainment. So Disney is definitely a very well-rounded company, especially when it comes to the entertainment business. Now, with that being said, it doesn't make it easy to do a comparison when you're looking at Disney and if it's a good stock to buy, because there's so many competitors that they have. You know, obviously Netflix could be a competitor. If we look at the amusement park side, Busch Gardens can be a competitor. Six Flags can be a competitor. If we look at the movie business, DreamWorks, yes, DreamWorks is not part of Disney, is a competitor. Other filmmaking companies are competitors, uh, other streaming services. So it's really hard to pinpoint exactly which area we want to compare this to as a stock. So. I simply compared it to other streaming networks or other kind of media service providers. And the ones that we compared it directly to are going to be Netflix and Comcast. So truthfully, as I was doing the comparison between these three companies, the best opportunity was Comcast. You know, when you compare the numbers, they have a more favorable PE ratio. They are less volatile than Disney because you could tell that by their beta. They have a little less of an earnings per share, but I think that they also have a much more favorable dividend payout as well as a dividend yield. Obviously from Netflix's standpoint, just to touch on that as well, personally I think that price earnings ratio is a little high for something that I'd be interested in. Considering both Disney and Comcast are below 40 and Netflix is up at 91. So might be a little bit of an issue or I think that's personally a little too high of a PE ratio, which is why I don't think Netflix is favorable here, as well as they don't pay a dividend. Now, that's not a knock against Netflix. That's totally fine given they're still a relatively new company. Yeah, they've been around for a while, but I think that Netflix still has a lot of room to grow and they're reinvesting in acquiring other shows, movies, products, making their own content all to put on the Netflix page. So makes sense for Netflix to not pay a dividend, but overall, since they don't pay a dividend and they have that really high price earnings ratio, I didn't see that as a very favorable investment at this point in time. Now, of course, those numbers though, really only tell one side of the story. So these are the ones that I generally look at. This is where I take my first take after listening to earnings calls, all that is comparing it to its competition. And when I see that one company is looking more favorable, I always think it's important to just kind of double check that with other data that's out there. So I compared all three of these companies, Disney, Netflix, and Comcast. I compared their gross and net profit margins as well as their current ratios. And to me, this is where Disney did stand out. So we'll talk about the gross profit margin first. 
Now, you can see Disney's is not much higher than Netflix's, and it's significantly lower than Comcast by you know, 29%, give or take. But what stood out to me is that Disney has a better net profit margin, which means that they do a better job than Comcast does when it comes to handling their expenses, managing their money, putting investments in the right place while still retaining earnings from it. Also, if you look at it, they all have a very similar current ratio, but at the end of the day, it's not really much of a difference. I've noticed from, I did take a quick look at a bunch of other companies, you know, just an example would be like Charter Communications, even Fox. You can in theory take a look at, uh, well, Spectrum is Charter, but you get the point. They all fall within that kind of 0.74 to 0.9 current ratio. Now, if you remember from both Peloton as well as Shopify, their current ratios were actually significantly higher. I think one was five, the other was nine. Those numbers are arbitrary. You can go back and watch those videos to confirm that for me. But obviously these are not areas that have a lot of cash on hand. My guess is that it's because they really spend a lot of their money again, acquiring content, either that's through buying somebody else's content or creating their own. And I think that this is a real opportunity for everybody in the picture. So when I take a look at these ratios again, it was still a really hard choice for me to decide, am I actually gonna stick with Disney or am I going to change it up a little bit and actually go with Comcast instead? Well, I did decide to stick with Disney this time and just a few reasons why. So the first reason is because Disney is just so well diversified. And as I mentioned in my video for Monday, it's one of those that if Disney goes out of business, that means there had to be a lot of series of events that happened for them to have gone out of business. So they must have, you know, the theme parks had to go out, Disney Plus had to go out of business, Star Wars can't be producing money, Marvel can't be producing money. The list really goes on and on and on. So that's why I, one of the reasons why I like Disney as an investment. Also, while I don't know entirely that much about their current CEO, if I'm being honest, I was a huge fan of Bob Iger, their previous CEO. And I also think it's a really respectable move that during the pandemic, we'll just say it, during the pandemic, that Bob Iger actually kind of came back into play and is offering support to their current, current CEO just through these times. He's not fully taking over the reins. He's not trying to step back into you know, their shoes and take back over, but he's offering the guidance because he was the CEO of Disney for quite a long time. So he has the knowledge of the way that things need to run, how they need to operate, and ultimately help navigate to the best of his ability through this current crisis. This isn't something anybody could have ever planned for. I don't think it's ever, you know, there's no college classes that'll train you on how to navigate COVID-19. But I still think that it's a very respectable move for him to step back into the business and do what he can. And it really just shows the loyalty that he has for Disney. And also, I know that there's been a lot of bad news around Disney because the parks are closed. Personally though, I'm still remaining optimistic on Disney. And the reason why is because we are yet to see a full year with both the parks in full operation as well as Disney Plus being available. That's what I was really excited to see, was to see how these numbers would compare. Obviously, that's not something we can compare right now. So I think when this all clears up, it'll be really interesting to see how different Disney's numbers are once they have a full year of the streaming service, as well as the parks being open in unison with each other. For this time, I decided to see if Disney's worth buying. Usually I use the free cash flow to the firm analysis. This time I use free cash flow to equity for the analysis here. Reason being is because I thought that the number, the intrinsic value that I was able to calculate was just a better representation of what I believe is a good share price for Disney. I don't want to go into the details about the differences between the two in this video. If you want me to explain those in another video, please leave that in the comment section down below. I'll gladly make a video so you know the difference here. But what I did, and I'll be honest, I just used some analyst estimates for this video just to make it a little bit easier and time saving for myself is we use instead of a weighted average cost of capital, I just use an analyst estimate for a required rate of return. And the average was about 12.21% for that, as well as an expected growth rate of about 15.14%. So after running those calculations, I came up to an intrinsic value of Disney stock, as you see on your screen of 128.92. 
Now, from when I saw last, Disney was trading below that number, but I'm not exactly sure what their current share price is. I'll be honest, I haven't looked today, and there's been some pretty big news with Disney, so I'm curious to know which direction that stock is headed in. Yesterday, the head executive, head honcho of the streaming services for Disney actually stepped down and became the CEO of TikTok, which I thought was a strange move. I, to be honest, I didn't read that much into it, but I'll be curious to know how investors' emotions are with Disney now that he has stepped out of the business to go to another company. Because overall, I feel that Disney has Disney Plus has really been such a great success for the company. It's interesting to think about why he might have left. And honestly, it could just be something like he worked on this for so long, now that he saw it come to fruition, maybe it's just time to take on a new challenge. Maybe there's issues within the company. Again, I didn't take that much time to research it. Just, I've been a little busy these past few days. So not something I fully know about, but let's take a look here. I'll pull it up on my screen and let's see what Disney is trading at currently. All right, now I'm gonna just take a screenshot of this and I'll pop that up on the screen so you can see as well. You can see as of 11.21 a.m. Eastern time on today, it's at 116.82. Nice, and it finally didn't change. So many times when I go to take that screenshot, I'll say the number, and as soon as I release the button, the price changes. So it always looks different. But we're trading at 116.82, which is obviously less than the 128 that I previously calculated. So to me, this looks like a good opportunity. And I'll be honest, Disney to me, I think even if it was at like 118, it's still a good investment. I think Disney is one of those real buy and hold companies. No, they don't pay the strongest dividend. No, they don't have the best dividend payout. But at the end of the day, it's Disney. I mean, do you, does anybody really anticipate Disney finding themselves in a lot of trouble and being bought out by a Netflix or some other provider, Universal Studios? Probably not. I don't think that's something that's gonna happen, and I would bet that that's something that wouldn't happen even in my lifetime. Short of some kind of crazy scandal within the company, issues at the theme parks, anything like that, I still really think that Disney is a company that you can buy at almost any price, and as long as you just have that long-term mindset and it's something that you would wanna hold on to, then it's just really worth the investment. Again, not one that's gonna make you super rich, but I think it's also could be used as a great investment for hedging or offsetting risk from maybe more risky investments like startups, IPOs, you know, companies with high PE ratios or, you know, just companies that most people are speculative on. So with all of that said, let's go ahead and get the paper trading pulled up. We'll take a look at the portfolio, see how we're doing so far, and then we'll go ahead and add Disney to our portfolio. Well, I made a huge mistake. I finished with placing the trade, was talking the whole time, and I accidentally deleted the screen recording. So that is super upsetting, but we'll just go over what we did. So I bought Disney. We bought uh, 35 shares of Disney at 116.91. You can see that on my screen right around this region here. So we were able to place the trade. I mentioned that we're not going to purchase any shares to Shopify this week. Might wait till next week and see what happens. I think really the next price point for that one I'm looking at is around, excuse me, like 755-ish a share, which actually we're getting close. So that might just be something I purchase in the middle of the week and you know I'll update you for the next video if that is something I execute another trade on. But just wanted to keep you updated. Yeah, taking a quick look here at the portfolio. Now we're down a little bit on Disney. I'm not too upset about that. I think that it's going to maybe drop for a little bit with this new news about the CEO leaving. I'm sorry, with the um, Kevin Mayer going to TikTok. But Shopify also down a little bit and same with the Vanguard fund. Nothing I'm too concerned about because you can see we still have a gain in this account of about $688, depending which second you're looking at it. So slow and steady, we're getting there. You know, so far, I think this is the sixth company I've done. We've made a little bit over $100 a week from this, which is nice. I'll, I'll take that any day. So I'm pretty happy with the direction that this is headed into. I just always have to say, I hope that nobody out there actually takes this as financial advice. This is just my method here of investing, how I look at companies and just showing you my strategy. Certainly watch other people's videos, take that into consideration. And if you need advice, as I always say, please speak to a financial advisor as they'll take the time to get to know your specific situation and help you understand what investments are gonna be the best for you. So with all of that said, before I end it, I just wanna ask a quick question to everybody watching. 
I'm sure you've noticed that I've been playing music recently in the background of my videos. Reason being is because I listen to those kind of stations, you know, like Chilled Cow or Chill Hop when I'm studying, doing research, or just need to focus, even if it's cleaning the house, because it's like not distracting to me and it really keeps me focused. And I thought maybe that would help just draw your attention in through these videos and give you something to listen to throughout it. But I have gotten some feedback that some people aren't a fan of it. So I just want to ask everybody, if you don't mind letting me know, do you like the music or is it something that I should get rid of? Personally, I like it, but I want to know what the majority of you out there like or dislike. So that way I'm providing content that you actually enjoy watching and don't have the little nuances with like music and whatnot. So quick thing right there. Again, just leave that down below. Yay or nay for the music. But as always, you could be anywhere in the world and you're right here with me. So thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to watch this video and for bearing with me throughout this uh, process. If you have any questions, as always, please let me know in the comment section down below. If you want to subscribe, that'd be super cool of you. If you liked the video, feel free to give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like the video, definitely give it a thumbs down so I know that I need to put some more work into these videos. But I just really appreciate your time. So I will let you go ahead and enjoy the rest of your day and I'll see you next time.